everyone, it's Lindsay and today I'm going to be talking about the top five books that I unfortunately just did not get to this year. Now I will say real quickly that this does not include the videos that were on my books to read before the end of 2018 because it is December. There are still two and a half weeks left and I am working my butt off to read as many of those as I can. These are other books that I just really wanted to get to that I didn't make myself read this year but that I really wish that, you know, I would have had time for. Well, let's just go ahead and jump right in. The first book that I did not get to that I really wanted to was Scythe by Niels Schusterman. Literally, booktube will not shut up about Scythe. So I'm like, okay, like I wasn't really, you know, on the dystopian train anymore. I was kind of moving over to something else. But now I'm like, I have to read this. Apparently Scythe is this amazing trilogy about like a girl and a boy, I think, and they live in a futuristic society where all kind of like human illnesses have been figured out and there's cures for so now there's this overpopulation issue and to combat that there are these people called scythes which i guess like cull down the population i've heard that it's super intense that the characters are really great there's lots of action it's kind of dark and twisty like i like and that it has really good dark themes and it's been recommended to me so many times. So I really want to get to it next year. I'm kind of ticked off about it though because if I'm correct, I think Audible made the audiobook so you can only get it through Audible, which means you have to pay for it. <laughs> so it sucks. I can't get it from my library. So I'm going to have to pick up the physical copy, which I'm always scared to do because I'm like, oh, what if I don't like it? It's a lot easier to get the audiobook from the library. But I don't know. I think I'm going to have to do it. I'm gonna have to do it. The next book on my list is Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson. Now this is a, from what I understand, it's a YA mystery thriller book about a girl who goes to this private preparatory academy and there was a murder that happened in the past and she's trying to solve the murder and the book is told in I think two perspectives. One is hers and then one is a character from when the murders were taking place like a hundred years earlier or whatever. This book honestly hasn't gotten a ton of hype but the people that have read it are like crazy about it and it's I think it's a duology so it has a second book coming out really soon next year I think. Uh, and I you guys know me like I love my adult mystery thrillers. I haven't read too many YA ones and I'm excited that we're getting more YA thrillers, so I really want to check this out. It takes place at a boarding school, which is what I really love. Death. I love death, and I love investigating death. So, like, this sounds like something I would really love, and I want to get to it real soon. Speaking of mystery thrillers, the next book on my list is Behind Her Eyes by Sarah Pinborough. I was just, like, super confused because I bought this book, like, extremely cheap because the back cover is ripped, and I just opened the book, and it's, like, upside down in the dust jacket. I thought it wasn't in English or something. I was, I was real confused. <laughs> so this is an adult mystery thriller. It's kind of, like, more of a domestic thriller, so it takes place with, like, children and the household and marital problems and things like that, which I really enjoy when it comes to stories like this um, and this follows a woman who goes to a bar and meets a guy and really likes him and then she finds out later that that guy is actually her new boss at her job which is like super awkward and at the same time she makes friends with another woman not knowing that that okay sorry my door just opened and like I thought it was a demon and it's just my cat we're good Whew, girl Okay, anyway, sorry. This girl finds out that her new friend that she's made in this new town is actually her boss's slash this guy that she kind of had a fling with at a bar's real husband. And there's a whole bunch of stuff that ensues from there. It's supposed to be great and thrilling and everyone has secrets and lies and like that's how I roll. If everyone has a secret and everyone lies, then I'm probably gonna like the book. The next book's kind of different for me, but I'm still really excited to get to it. And that is The Astonishing Color of After by Emily XR Pan. Now I normally don't read contemporaries, like that's just not my jam, but um, this is like a mix of fabulism and contemporary all thrown together into one. It's about an Asian American girl whose mother passes away after she has committed suicide. She believes that her mother has come back to like haunt her or something as like being reincarnated into a bird so she follows this bird over to Taiwan and I think she meets her grandparents and it's just supposed to be this really beautiful depiction of grief and family lineage and things like that. I think I've spoken about this before last time I talked about this book but since I know don't normally go for contemporaries I was totally gonna pass on this and then Books and Lala who has an amazing channel if you don't watch her go do it because like 
what are you doing? <laughs> um, she posted a picture of one of these pages on, I think it was her Instagram live, and the writing was just so beautiful that I was like, I have to pick this book up like even if I don't like it I feel like I could learn so much from this writer's voice and prose like that one page was just so so beautiful with imagery and metaphor that I, I had to pick it up so I'm really excited to see what this is about hopefully I can learn something from it and improve my own writing skill you know even if I don't like the story which I really hope that I like the story <laughs> the last book that I unfortunately did not get to was Salt Kill Girls by Claire Legrand so this is also supposed to be like a YA creepy mystery thriller I guess but it sounds like it's got a little bit of magic woven in so this is about three different girls that live in this town called Salt Kill that is plagued by a monster who kidnaps and kills girls. I've heard that this is very atmospheric. It keeps you on the edge of your seat and f just ripping through the pages. And it also is actually like creepy. Like I've heard people say it actually scared them. So I'm always excited when books can do that. I like, I don't like being scared in books, but I like books that elicit strong emotion. So if that strong emotion is fear, then like, awesome. You did your job as a writer. I'm excited to pick up your book. So I, I really want to get to this. Also, I love this cover. It's so grim and just creepy right up my alley. All right, so those are the five books that I did not get to in 2018 that I really want to get to in 2019. Make sure you let me know it down below if you've read these. Let me know what you, th you thought about them because like I need to know if I need to push them up higher on my TBR or not. Um, so let me know if you liked them. Let me know some of the books that you unfortunately didn't get to because it's just it's so sad when you run out of time. But thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!